In June 2023, a tragic incident occurred during a voyage to the depths of the ocean. The journey began in the vast expanse of the Atlantic Ocean near Canada, approximately 600 kilometers from Newfoundland, a Canadian island. The Titan Submersible, a privately owned underwater vessel operated by Ocean Gate, met a fatal end. On the 18th of June at 9.30 a.m., five adventurous individuals embarked on a daring voyage on the Titan Submersible diving deep into the unforgiving depths of the sea. Their destination? The wreck of the Titanic, the iconic ship that met its tragic fate a century ago. With an average descent rate being 73 feet per minute, it would take around 170 minutes to reach the shipwreck of the Titanic, with 5.3 atmospheric pressure being added to the hull in each minute of its descent. An astonishing 366 atmospheric pressure will attempt to crush it by the time it reaches the Titanic. To understand what that pressure is equivalent to, imagine having a pencil in your palm and attempting to crush it from all directions with the thrust of a VF-1 rocket engine that took astronauts to the moon. Sounds horrific, right? Given the extreme depths they would reach, the submersible was unable to rely on GPS for communication. Instead, they communicated with their support ship using a text messaging system. While the specifics of their internet connection remain unclear, they were reportedly using Starlink's satellite internet service for communication. Getting back to the story, Titan lost contact with its mothership around 1 hour and 45 minutes into the dive at 3,800 meters. As now we know, the Titan submersible imploded, killing all of its passengers, a tragedy that any composite material engineer from anywhere around the world would have predicted. Now, why would the engineers predict such a tragedy? Let's understand why. The Titan submersible was a unique creation, built using a combination of carbon fiber and composites. It was designed to reach remarkable depths with a claimed maximum depth of 4,000 meters, or approximately 13,000 feet. The pressure vessel of the submersible consisted of two titanium hemispheres connected by matching titanium interface rings. These components were attached to a 142 centimeter internal diameter, 2.4 meter long carbon fiber wound cylinder. Carbon fiber is not really known for its strength. Engineers have been using steel and aluminum for a very long time, which gave them a lot of data to study about its core strength and conduct testing. Whereas carbon fiber is very exotic in the materials world. They are suitable for use in airplanes that are pressurized from the inside. However, it's not commonly used for deep sea dives with humans as passengers. This immediately blared alarms amongst the composite engineers around the world. The hull of the Titan submersible was constructed using carbon fiber along with titanium end plates and a small window at one end. The combination of carbon fiber and titanium in the submersible structure may be a critical factor in the implosion. When different materials like carbon fiber and titanium are used together, they can create joints with dissimilar properties. These joints might not be able to withstand the extreme water pressure experienced during deep sea dives. This, in turn, could have compromised the structural integrity of the Titan submersible, ultimately leading to the tragic implosion. For a complicated structure like Titan, engineers suggest curing it in an autoclave. Autoclaves are used primarily in the curing process of composite materials. Composites, especially those used in high-performance applications like aircraft and deep-sea submersibles, often need to be cured under specific conditions to achieve optimal strength, rigidity, and other desired properties. A company called Spencer Composites was given the task of making the composite hull. The CEO was in shock when handed in the immense design of the Titan as the porosity of the cured vessel was less than 1%. This type of defect can increase the risk of snap buckling. A classic everyday example of snap buckling is that pop sound you hear when pressing and releasing a plastic bottle. As you press, the sides of the bottle deform inward, and when a certain threshold is reached, they suddenly snap or pop out, returning to their original shape. Another fascinating feature of the Titan was it was operated using a repurposed Logitech GF710 wireless gamepad. This unexpected choice sparked rumors and questions about whether the controller played a role in any potential disaster. However, it's important to clarify 
that this controller was only used inside the submersible, which is dry and temperature controlled. The controller was subjected to rigorous testing to ensure its reliability and accuracy. Regardless of whether it was originally designed for a PlayStation, its ability to connect to a computer and effectively relay user commands, now let's learn a bit about the company, OceanGate. OceanGate, a private company founded by Stockton Rush, a former aerospace engineer. OceanGate's mission was to provide deep-sea expeditions as a form of tourism, catering to wealthy individuals seeking unparalleled adventure. In July 2021, OceanGate added Titanic tours to its offerings, attracting an elite clientele with a craving for adventure. Stockton Rush, the founder and CEO of OceanGate Expeditions, has been in the spotlight due to his unconventional stance on safety regulations and submersible design. He believed that the safety rules in the U.S. submarine industry were holding back his innovations long before his submersible went missing. Rush had voiced his complaints about these regulations, which he felt were too restrictive for his vision. Moreover, Rush had a reputation for boasting about breaking rules and using unconventional materials in the construction of his submersibles. These practices were unusual in the industry, and many experts raised concerns about the potential risks involved in his designs. 36 industry leaders, deep sea explorers, and oceanographers wrote a letter to Stockton Rush warning against the risky, unverified approach taken by Titan. Their concerns centered on the potential for a catastrophic accident, a warning that tragically came to fruition. Even journalist David Pogue, who has been to the Titan, has expressed his fear and tension when the Titan lost its communication with its support vessel for about four to five hours. They could still send text messages to the sub, but had no clue of the Titan's location. OceanGate even used the credibility of using NASA and Boeing as their partners to gain visibility in the market, but both Boeing and NASA's spokesperson have denied any direct involvement. In fact, NASA stated that it only had an agreement of using a part of its facility, but had no agreement on conducting any test using its workforce. David Lockridge, OceanGate's Director of Marine Operations, was terminated from his employment for filing a quality control report where he stated that no NDT, or non-destructive testing, was performed on the Titan hull to check for any delamination. David also stated that the window that you look out of was only built to handle pressures till the depths of 1,300 meters. Operating in unregulated international waters, OceanGate exploited every opportunity to bypass safety measures. This high-risk adventure was an example of extreme adventure tourism, an experience so exclusive and expensive that each passenger had invested over $250,000 for a few hours beneath the waves. The news of its disappearance sent shockwaves around the world, and an international search operation was launched to locate the submersible. This gripping and suspenseful situation held the public's attention until the first pieces of remains were discovered several days later. However, Titan was not the company's sole submersible. OceanGate also operated Antipods and Cyclops, each capable of reaching different depths, but Titan was the flagship designed to withstand the crushing pressure found 3,810 meters below the sea's surface. The submersible was prepared for a long dive. It had enough air for its passengers to breathe for up to 96 hours. The subsequent four-day search and rescue operation was both challenging and frantic. The search area covered an expanse of 25,000 square kilometers, a daunting task given the submersible's van-sized dimensions. The effort involved multiple aircraft, ships, and remotely operated vehicles, ROVs. ROVs were especially valuable for their ability to explore the depths of the ocean without endangering human lives. The search was further complicated by the absence of an emergency position indicating radio beacon, EPIRB, on the submersible which could have helped pinpoint its location. Several days later, some pieces of the submersible were found in the water, giving some clues about what might have happened. It took four months for the U.S. Coast Guard to recover the remaining pieces of the submersible and what they believed were parts of the deceased. Stockton accused industry players for using safety arguments to hinder innovation, which further strained his relationship with safety regulators and experts in the field. This approach put lives in peril, and ultimately, it cost the lives of those aboard Titan. 
Stockton Rush's audacious disregard for safety regulations and his experimental use of unproven materials ultimately cost lives and resulted in the implosion of Titan. This unfortunate incident has etched his name into the annals of history alongside inventors who paid the ultimate price for their innovations. Please like and share if you like this video and let us know which topic you'd like us to cover next.